Hello Jackson Jaguars! I am going to be reading a story for you on this video so I hope you will watch and listen and enjoy the story. This is called Ella Fitzgerald, The Tale of a Vocal Virtuoso and it is written by Andrea Davis Pinkney and Brian Pinkney. There are four parts to this story and they are named after tracks, just like on a music CD or record. Track one, Hoofin' in Harlem. Track two, Jammin' at Yale. Track three, Stompin' at the Savoy. Track four, Carnegie Hall Scat. So maybe that will give you some insight as to what this story is gonna be about and the places we might travel to. You may think I look like any other cat, but baby, I'm in a class all by myself. Scat Cat's my name, Scat Cat Monroe. A name I've earned, got my name from Noanella. Ella Fitzgerald, the queen of scat. What's scat, you ask? Scat's the sound that don't hold back. Ella's sound, Ella's sound, that was scat. Singing so supreme, music's velvet ribbon dream. Let me tell you Ella's story, cause you see, I was there from the get-go. I saw it all, me, Scat Cat Monroe. I watched Ella go from a small town girl to the first lady of song, to a vocal virtuoso, bar none. So sit back, listen up, here's four tracks, cut to cut, here's how Ella got her sound. Got her silk and silver style. Got her Lady Ella Scat. Track one, Hoofin in Harlem. The child's name was Ella. She was a big boned girl with dreams of becoming a dancer. But there weren't many dance schools in Yonkers, New York, the little city where Ella Fitzgerald and her mother Tempe lived. Ella had her heart set on pretty stepping her way to fame, and she didn't need a dance school to do it. She taught herself to tap dance. Determination was her teacher. The sidewalk was her stage. Imagination was her spotlight. In time, Ella and her friends took to performing on street corners. When Ella's neighbors saw her go, they told Ella to shuffle in Harlem, to take her hoofing to New York, the big city, where dreams really do come true. That's when Harlem became Ella's stomping ground. On the night of November 21st, 1934, Ella entered a talent contest at the Apollo Theater. She was 17 and scrubbed clean down to her toe jam. Ew. But as soon as Ella saw the footlights, her feet failed her. She stood front and center, knees knocking, teeth clacking, a wannabe with a stomach full of butterflies. Have you ever had butterflies in your stomach? It means you're nervous. The girl was hardly dressed to impress. She wore work boots and hand-me-downs. Luckily, Ella was thinking on her toes. She refused to be booed back to Yonkers, so she started to sing. At first, her voice came quiet as a whisper, a measly little hiss, soft as a cricket. But when the band joined in, Ella rolled out a tune sweet enough to bake. She won the contest straight up, kicked her dance dreams to the curb, and pinned all her hopes on being a singer. I was there in the wings, watching it all, swinging to Ella's groove, wearing a grin as big and proud as that Cheshire dude. So, she's not gonna be a dancer anymore. She decided, I think I'll be a singer now. Track two, jamming at Yale. Let's see what happens at Yale. Soon, Ella had audiences eating out of her hand. She went on to win talent showcases all over Harlem. 
1935, the Harlem Opera House signed her as a featured singer. One night, Bardu Ali, the master of ceremonies for the Chick Webb Orchestra, saw Ella perform. That's when Bardu know, knew, knew that Chick needed Ella. And Ella needed Chick. That the two of them could make beautiful music together. But you see, Chick was a finicky bird. Easy to ruffle. Hard to please. A perfectionist. He was a jazz drummer who liked his music hot. Swing music was Chick's style. Cut the rug rhythms that put the pulse on a party. He believed folks came to hear the instruments in his band. Not some singer. Besides, he already had a singer for his orchestra, a guy named Charlie Linton. What Chick didn't know was that Ella's voice was its own instrument. When Bardu took Ella to meet Chick, Chick agreed to give Ella a chance. He told her she could sing with his orchestra at a college dance the next night. At Yale University, the Ivy League, where getting loose don't always come easy. Chick told Ella that if she could work the college crowd, she could join his band. So Ella went to Yale with a purpose. And man, once Ella started to sing, she had them Yaleys jamming. That night, Chick welcomed Ella into his band. He took her under his wing, and the two of them flew to the Savoy Ballroom, the hippest dance spot in Harlem. Now, do you think they were actually flying? Or are they just saying that they flew to say kind of how they were just like on top of the world, get into the Harlem Savoy Ballroom? They weren't really flying, though. Track three, Stompin' at the Savoy. So now we know where we are, the Savoy Ballroom in Harlem. The Chick Webb Orchestra had a regular gig at the Savoy. Night after night, they played to a house packed tighter than the A-train. The place was crammed full of folks who had come to shake their tails at the orchestra's sound. And honey, yours truly could shake with the best of them. You ever see a cat do the kangaroo, the lindy hop, the Susie Q? Those are all different types of dance moves that they would have done back then. What do you think the kangaroo dance move might have looked like? Or the Lindy Hop? Or the Susie Q? I don't know. Maybe you could look those dance moves up and learn them. Those were the moves they danced at the Savoy. Danced while Ella belted from the bandstand. It was Chick's drumming that pulled people onto the dance floor. But it was Ella's singing that kept them there. Ella was not like other highfalutin singers. She never forgot where she came from. She remembered that her first work as a performer had been on the streets. After Ella sang, she stepped down from the stage and danced with her fans. Ella let them know she was one of them. She showed them she could kangaroo too. She stomped at the Savoy like any other paying customer. Wouldn't that be so cool if you went to see one of your favorite musicians on stage and they came down into the audience with you and hung out with you? I think that would be really cool, but I don't know if that happens too much these days. But that's what Ella Fitzgerald did. Chick Webb was born with a beat in his bones. We're still at the Savoy. I had to make sure we were still on the same track. Chick Webb was born with a beat in his bones. He was a master drummer, a musician with a fix on jazz. Ella made it her business to learn all she could from Chick. She had talent. He had know-how. Chick showed Ella the right way to deliver a song. He taught her to shade the high notes and light the lows, to grab a hold of a tune, to wrap her voice around each melody. When the sun set on Harlem and the cats and kitties came out to play, it was Ella and Chick they were coming to see. When Chick and Ella performed together, they were grits with gravy. They brought out the best in each other. People called it chemistry. I called it musical magic. 
On May 11, 1937, the Chick Webb Orchestra took on the Benny Goodman Orchestra in the Savoy's Battle of the Bands. There are the two bands, and they're going to see which one is better. These contests were a Savoy tradition, and child, they were fierce. One band tried to outplay the other until the crowd, with their applause, chose the winner. Benny Goodman was called the King of Swing. He played the clarinet. But King Benny didn't have Ella, who would someday be known as the queen of her craft. And they didn't have Chick Webb, a royal percussionist. Benny set, Benny set the contest in motion. His band started with a song called Peckin'. They made the place swing, no doubt. If you want to listen to that song, Peckin', I'll include it in the links. Then you can decide for yourself if you like Benny's orchestra or Chick and Ella's orchestra better. They made the place swing with that song, Peckin'. Then Chick's band took their turn. Chick's drum solos were slamming. They backed up Ella's vocals, which gave a new meaning to the word divine. The contest was close from the get-go. Those musicians put a fever to the room. They had me sweating the sheen off my fur and scuffing my wingtip shoes. When Chick's band played Harlem Congo, you can listen to that one too, the crowd got hotter than bootleg Tabasco. That's because Ella set Harlem Congo on fire. Her voice was quick fried rhythm with a brassy satin twist. She sizzled with Chick's cymbals, busted loose with his bongos. She tamed the crowd while Chick played his timpani. And man, that ain't all. Ella worked the downbeat. She milked the downbeat. She sang like tomorrow wasn't ever going to come. 4,000 people filled the Savoy Ballroom that night. The contest lasted five hours. When it was done, everybody knew who was the boss. Five hours long for that contest. Do you think you could listen to those two bands for five hours? They must have been really something to stay there and listen to them play back and forth that whole time. Who do you think's gonna win? Track four. Carnegie Hall Scott. The Savoy was Ella's stepping stone. Thanks to nightly radio broadcasts from the club, Ella was the name sitting pretty on everybody's lips. I think Ella and Chick ended up winning, and that's how she became the star of the Savoy Ballroom. But where are they going to go now? It's track four. Carnegie Hall Scott. Hmm. Ella took the Chick Webb Orchestra to new heights. She was the orchestra's star attraction. Nightclub owners had to wait in line to book the band. Some of them had never had a black singer perform at their clubs. Ella's popularity showed them that a true star, it doesn't matter what color skin you have, you just shine. Ella could even put stardust in a ditty. In 1938, she and Al Feldman, a member of Chick's band, wrote and recorded A Tisket, A Tasket. Do you know that one? A tisket, a tasket, a green and yellow basket. I wrote a letter to my friend and on the way I dropped it. It's a really famous song and guess who wrote that? Ella Fitzgerald. I'll put the link for her version of that song too so you can listen to it. Man, when you're an alley cat like me, you hear all kinds of hopscotch chatter and jump rope jive. A tisket, a tasket, wasn't, wasn't anything more than a nursery rhyme chanted a million times a day by kids from Sugar Hill to Hollywood. But to hear Alice swing that brown and yellow basket was a whole nother thing. A tisket, a tasket, was a smash hit. In time... Folks came to call the song a jitterbug spiritual. So in Ella's version, she sings about a brown and yellow basket. I learned the song as a green and yellow basket, but still, still the same song. Ella didn't shy back from any kind of music. 
When bebop became hotter than swing and jazz, music lovers turned to Bird and Dizzy. Ella took her place on the bebop bandwagon. Bebop was like jazz, but on the wild side. It was syncopation and locomotion. Fast smack sound, done low down. It was slam bamming on the flitter tip. It was ham hock jabber fever pitch. Dizzy Gillespie was Bebop's main man. He turned jazz on its head. With his trumpet, he could blow notes into backflips, into flatted fifths, into popcorn blips that flung, flung free from his horn. Dizzy asked Ella to join his band. He even invited Ella to give Bebop a try, to improvise, to sing the ping pong rhythms that gave Bebop its sound. So there's G Dizzy Gillespie, and he does Bebop, and he said he improvises. Do you know what that means to improvise? It means make it up as you go. We do that in music class. So he's making up tunes on his trumpet, and he says, Ella, you can sing with me and make up the song as you go. Ella went along for Dizzy's ride. He played the trumpet, so they say they're riding on the trumpet, but that's not, that's not really what they did. One night when the two of them started to jam, Ella made Bebop her own. For Ella, scat singing drove Bebop home. Ella used her voice in the same way Dizzy used the notes he made with his horn, like a runaway leaf flying high on a breeze. Now, when Ella performed, she let her lyrics go. She took her singing out to play. When Ella recorded How High the Moon, her scat swung to cloud nine and back. So when you listen to the scat singing in bebop, you'll hear them singing lots of silly made up syllables like dooby doo be doo, zebop the doodle doo, and stuff like that. So you're gonna listen to her recording of How High the Moon, and I want you to hear if there's any nonsense words that she sings. And that's the improvisation, that's the scat. On September 29th, 1947, Ella and Dizzy headlined a sold out performance at Carnegie Hall. They brought Bebop to a high and mighty concert stage, but the show was far from uppity, it was fun. So they performed in a big orchestra hall where normally lots of orchestras play, but their music was not like orchestra music. It was a very different kind of style. Dizzy's trumpet chirped. It zipped. It sputtered in double time tempo. Dizzy bounced his bebop to Ella. Ella's singing hung fast to Dizzy's rhythm. There's the kind of microphones they would have used in the 1930s and 40s when they were performing. Ella shot back her scat. Man, those two were making up music in the moment. It was invention. It was frolic. It was cooler than cool. Ella put scat on the map. When she and Dizzy threw down their skippity hop dooby doo bop, every soul in the place slipped into the jam. Ella soon had fans who loved all kinds of music. That's kind of like me. I love all kinds of music. They came to call Ella by many names. The Queen of Scat. The First Lady of Song. A vocal virtuoso. Now, I'm the keeper of Ella's flame. The taller of her tail. The Scat Cat. So kids, don't be fooled by phony felines. A cat by any other name ain't the same. Take it from me, Scat Cat Monroe. I was there with Ella from the get-go. The end. If you would like to learn more about Ella Fitzgerald, you can do some research on her or on the other people we learned about, like Dizzy Gillespie, the trumpet player. And... I would like you to listen to the links that I provided with this, but if you want to do more research, you can look up other songs and videos by Ella Fitzgerald. I hope you liked that story, and I'll see you soon. Bye.